Okay, so while we have some breathing room, uh, for Thursday's video, I want to cover what is India VIX, what is IV. A uh, lot of people have been discussing this on the Nifty BN group, and uh, sometimes I find that there are people who not particularly completely understand what should be a relatively simple and straightforward concept. So I'll try to just keep it as simple as possible. So India VIX is nothing but the volatility index um, that is. And this is based on Nifty. So the volatility index of Nifty. Now, what does that mean? So let's just take a look at India VIX. So based on Chicago Board of Options Exchange, they have a particular model which does only one thing, which is it pulls out what are the premiums of the near and future uh, options expiries and how much risk are they pricing in. How much is a buyer willing to pay? How much is a seller willing to sell? What is the bid ask spread and at which point are they agreeing? So if the prices that people are paying for options, when you look at options pricing from a slightly larger horizon is more then India VIX will go up. Okay. It on its own, it's nothing. It is just a reverse calculation. It is a derivative of what premiums in data data options are doing. So naturally, if, for example, there are some big events coming up, like there is a budget going to come out, there's an election going to come out, the premiums, as we covered in the previous video, which is demand, supply and urgency will be on the higher side because the perceived risk from the option seller will be higher. The perceived reward to the option buyer will be higher. And because premiums are higher in near and later dated options, India VIX will go up. It is not because India VIX is coming down that option prices are coming down. It's because option prices are coming down that India VIX is coming down and vice versa if India VIX is going up. Now, for example, some people like to also look at the price action on India VIX itself, right? So, for example, so some people will say, look, India VIX and you have to ignore the VIX because uh, there will be some miscalculations here. So some people will say India VIX more or less is trading in the range of something like 19 right, to, to 25. So 20 to 25. You can say India VIX is trading in the range of 20 to 25. So what some people will do when it is 20, which means later dated options are relatively cheaper than what the range they've been in, they like to initiate calendar spreads. And when India VIX is on the higher side, they like to enter short straddles, short strangles, things of that nature. So, India VIX is nothing but a reverse calculation of how much volatility or rather implied volatility is being priced in by options which are near and further dated. It is that simple. If the premiums go up, which means the pricing in more risk, which means the fear is more or the potential reward on a move is more, then India VIX goes up and vice versa. Now I want to go over something as fundamental as what is IV itself, what is implied volatility. Now I won't go by the textbook definition and I will put it this way. When you plug and if all these uh, Greeks are based on the Black-Scholes model, let us say the Black-Scholes model for a certain spread except uh, has a certain theta value. Okay, So let us say you have a strangle which is in next month's expiry and you have got a uh, thousand points hypothetically speaking. Let us say on a particular day, as per that model, 50 points of DK was meant to happen. Now, instead of 50 points of DK, as per the theta value that Black Scholes has calculated, if 60 points happens, then what that additional 10 points has uh, of DK has happened will be attributed to IV reduction, right? Because more DK has happened, which means expected volatility has come down. Now, let us say instead of decaying by 50, it decays only by 40. Then the model will say this is not making sense. It should have decayed by 50. So if it didn't decay by 50, that 10 points addition will go into the fact that IV has increased. That means volatility expectation has increased. The Black-Scholes model in itself is absolutely um, blown out of proportion in terms of how good it is uh, to trade the market. You don't need to understand the Black-Scholes model to trade the market, but it is also at the same time the most cohesive way of explaining behavior of options pricing. So let me put it uh, this way. Generally, you have every option price being defined by 
how much somebody is willing to pay for it and how much somebody is willing to sell it for. Whereas looking at some of these grids can give you a rough understanding of how your position might behave, especially if you are a beginner. Want to meet like-minded traders and discuss option strategies, suggestions and more? Just type in Discuss Nifty in your Telegram search box and join the friendly trader community. Okay, so to demonstrate this a little bit, I'm going to just take a trade. Let's say in the June expiry, I do one at the money short strategy. All right. So currently, what is the credit that is available between the two of them? You can say something like uh, 750, 760, something like that. All right. So that's the credit that you're getting. Now, as per um, the model of Black Scholes, let us say tomorrow market opens, absolutely nothing happens. It doesn't move one point left or right. Nothing happens. As per the model, the the theta that should happen should be more or less um, 644. So we need to have 644 points of profit tomorrow morning if we, sorry, tomorrow by the end of the day, if we take this trade and uh, more or less uh, market doesn't move anywhere and IV doesn't change at all, which means we're assuming India VIX also is not moving at all. It stays exactly 20. We will get this much profit by the end of the day if the market doesn't move. Now, the other way of looking at it is if you have, let us say, 1000 rupees profit, then you will find that India VIX would have gone down, which means more than what the model had attributed to the theta DK that should have happened. If more than that happens, then it will say that IV has come down. And if such later dated options IV is coming down, India VIX will be going down. India VIX is calculated across multiple expiries. So you can't take only one expiry, but for the purpose of demonstration, let us say only nothing happens, absolutely nothing happens, but you make only 200 points of profit. Market doesn't move anywhere, but you make only 200 points. I'd be like, no, you were supposed to make 644. So same time, you'll find that India VIX has gone up. Basically, if the model cannot explain why there has been excess addition of uh, value or deletion of value from any particular spread, then it will say IV has gone up or IV has gone down. What it cannot explain, it will attribute to volatility and implied volatility. So I hope this was simple enough. Um, if you do have questions, uh, please put it across in the comments and I will get back to each of them. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Thank you for watching. Please post any questions you have in the comment section. Also, do not forget to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. To find us on Twitter, Telegram and Facebook, use the username NiftyBN. Also, we post some of our trades to the community tab. So do not forget to check that from time to time.